Thank you, sir. Okay, everybody. Uh, the reason we're trying to stay so tight on time besides respecting your time is that there's a luncheon uh, at noon that some of the participants here are, are planning to attend. So we want to wrap that up. Uh, one thing that uh, one of our participants pointed out, there were no clear recycling bins here, and that was an oversight on my part. Uh, I'm going to ask if you've got a can on your way out to put them on that, uh, on that bus tray over there. She said somebody from Marriott cleared it off a little while ago. If I have to, I'll take them home to recycle. Uh, but, but So please uh, put your cans there, and thanks for pointing that out, Esther. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, go around the room and ask each uh, a reporter to report out. We only have about a minute each. We want to get this on record. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to actually get my video camera so that I can record your report out. And uh, Tom or this table over here will start there and then move, move around to the rest of, of the group. You're, hey, you're a guy. You're a guy. You got it. And if you would stand up, if you could, please. All right, John. Bobby, we're not going to get this done in, in a uh, minute. I'll read off these things as fast as I can. Works. On the organizations, Audubon Society, Sierra Club, the uh, American Society for Landscape Engineers, the American Planning Association, the Green Building Council, the UK Sustainability Office, the Arboretum Home Builders Association, the uh, MPO, the Federal Medical Center, and FCDC with the jail and, and prisons, I-75 Nicholasville Bypass, the Parks and Recreation of each of the counties, Watershed Counties, the Growing Warriors Program with the vets uh, producing uh, products, the other issues facing the region and the Commonwealth, uh, reorganizing and restructuring government for regional planning, mass transportation, alternative transportation, uh, rail transportation if we could get uh, additional, uh, geothermal, uh, GPS mapping, improving health including uh, additional leagues for seniors or other activities for the aging population, uh, what programs or initiatives, food initiatives, economic support for farmers, connectivity, and especially connecting trails for t to other than just uh, Scott and uh, Fayette, restructuring government, regional planning authority, comprehensive plans for the whole regional area and Kentucky River Trail. Excellent. Well done. Good good table there. Who's the spokesperson over here? Okay, Jamie. All right. Uh, Jamie Clark, Climate Control Heating and Air. Uh, the other programs in the area, uh, Efficiency First Kentucky, if you've not seen it, uh, Efficiency First is a uh, national organization of energy efficiency folks trying to get homes to uh, more energy efficient. We have a Kentucky chapter. Uh, Cindy Slide absolutely had like 50 different groups. Uh, Colleen Slide as well. The PACE program is coming. Uh, GCEA out of Cincinnati is pushing that on a commercial level. Uh, you should look into that. On bill financing through Mason. Uh, pilot programs funded by 319 and the Fed. Uh, the REAP grants. Kentucky sent REAP grant money back this last year because they didn't get used. So that's something we need to be looking at. And then connecting youth sustainability programs throughout the state. Um, what issues are facing the region? Too many silos, too many universities not wanting to share with other universities and too many of the universities that think they already know everything and that's not just in the university, that's corporate institutions as well. Um, we need the right people that understand green practices and better uh, decision making opportunities. Um, cost benefit education, including triple bottom line funding. There's a reason all the university or all the schools in Kentucky are now going to thermal. It's life cycle cost averaging we really need to be looking at. Um, on the last question, we really felt uh, teaching the teachers and teaching the legislatures. There's too many people in positions of power and in, in positions of education that have the wrong way of thinking. Sometimes it's 30 years ago thinking, so we really need to educate the educators. Excellent, Jamie. Well done. Who's the spokesman over here? Right here. All right. All right. Try to do this in order. All right. Um, other green and sustainable initiatives. We had LFUCG's water quality incentive uh, grant program, looking at net, uh, net waste uh, initiatives and recycling, watershed watch in Kentucky and waterways alliance. Next one, issues. Um, 
cheap energy allowing for inefficiency, inefficient uh, energy use, uh, the rising cost of utility, uh, the rising utility cost um, will encourage efficiencies, but will we get there fast enough? Water quality and needing uh, new business models, which kind of goes to the other tables uh, topic um, that we, we're entering a new era and we need new business models to encourage sustainable practices. Um, programs or initi initiatives to be focused on, energy cost savings for homes, energy cost savings for non-residential properties, um, outreach from companies that implement energy efficiency, uh, efficiencies and mechanisms to share knowledge and technology, and develop an umbrella organization to coordinate sustainable efforts. Well done. Well done. Who's the, uh, who is the spokesman over here? Okay. So for the other organizations in our community in Central Kentucky, we were talking about church green teams, the Arboretum, Fayette County Extensions, and Masters Gardens Association, Green, ba green Build Council and Home Builders Council, Bluegrass Trust uh, Company Green Teams, Co-op Gardens like the Federated Garden Club, Arboretum, and Extension Office, and uh, Lexington Tree Board and Foundation, and then Historic Preservation Associations. When we're talking about issues facing the region and the Commonwealth, Commonwealth, we were really thinking about uh, development in regards to uh, preserving land that is already rural and uh, non-urban. And then we were talking about water quality, non-renewable resources, and especially in eastern Kentucky where there's a large uh, dependency upon the coal industry for their economy and other uh, parts of it. And then finally for programs or initiatives to help improve the local environment, we are talking about raising awareness and expanding sustainability to the already outside of the already compassionate community partners. So in essence, expanding the choir we keep preaching to. And then we wanted to uh, talk about more renewable energy and composting, as in uh, taking the leftovers from restaurants or grocery stores and really utilizing these and not letting them go to waste. Well done. Who's the uh, spokesman over here? Tristine, give me a moment so I can move around. Here, Bob. Yeah, just move around. What issues are facing the region of the Commonwealth? Our changing energy landscape, our 33% increase in energy prices in the last four years, and our predicted rapid increase, lack of, of political and civic will to face the critical issues, an impact, the impact of the polarization of special interest uh, in our state and outside of our state, uh, education, environmental and civic engagement, lack thereof, regional functionality that is vastly diverse, um, vastly diverse needs with among our state and economic, environmental, social, and educational. It's very difficult to address a statewide need when it's hard to identify a statewide need because our needs are so diverse. What programs or initiatives should we focus on to help improve our environment? Education and awareness, how, but how is it, people throw that out all the time, education and awareness needs to be improved, it's a priority, but how was that actually implemented, how do you articulate that, what does it look like on the ground, how is it measured, and awareness, um, you know, we know that, that bleed, that, that, what is it, if it bleeds, it leads, right, and so um, we need to do a better job of figuring out how to get our success stories out. Um, in louder and faster ways through social media, through local media, media, figure out a way to tell our stories better. Other great sustainable initiatives, Kentucky Environmental Education Council, other utilities, Plantory, Seed Leaf, Food Chain, Kentucky Glean, Woodford Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Forward Woodford, and Kentucky Council of Churches. Well done. Who's the spokesman over here? Bill? Yes, on the green and sustainable initiatives, uh, our table thought that there was uh, a lot of underrepresentation by a lot of nonprofits that would really benefit from this type of uh, uh, participation, such as the Land Conservation, Bluegrass Conservancy, Fayette Allowance, TNC, Kentucky uh, uh, National Land Trust, Lexington Green Business Challenge. Issues facing the region. Likewise, we identified the, the energy cost of Kentucky residential business industry is facing a past 33% increase in cost. In the next two years is estimated to increase by another 15%. How do we transition away from uh, coal and into uh, a renewable energy realistic, realistic goals for that transition? A real emphasis on the replacing of the coal-related jobs, uh, helping create jobs in renewables. Um, an opportunity for hydro uh, power generation, especially in the Kentucky River Basin. 
opportunity for public transportation and uh, uh, especially here in uh, I think central Kentucky uh, identifying land use and growth to reduce personal vehicle miles mm. programs or initiatives uh, to focus on improving the local environment um, uh, there's a, a local government energy retrofit program that is uh, being uh, sponsored by the uh, CAER, the Kentucky uh, Center for Applied Energy Research. That's a great program that could be expanded and it has lots of good help. Continue to be uh, creative and identify areas where economics push the green and the sustainability agenda. Uh, other initiatives, uh, hang on, did I miss this? Or have I finished? Yeah. I think I'm finished. Thank you. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't mention biomass in that in that litany. Uh, it's implied. Uh, yes. <laughs> Who's the spokesperson over here? All right. Thanks. Okay. So for the organizations that we wanted to connect with, include the Kentucky Student Environmental Coalition, the Solar Energy Solutions. Seedly Food Chain and the Kentucky Agricultural Department, um, particularly the coordinator Ashton Porter Wright. And for the main issues that are facing our region include net metering and the lack of enforcement of environmental protection policies. Uh, programs that could be more focused on to help our local environment include um, policies for renewable energy and particularly public education like what was previously mentioned um, educating our educators and also bringing in sustainable initiatives into our classroom so all students can be more aware of the issues that are going on well done yeah, uh, can i say yes. one, one thing mm -hmm. uh, just to chime in uh, you know, uh, on the net metering uh, issue, uh, uh, you know, how many people are really familiar with what net metering is as far as renewable energy? Let's assume they don't. Okay, let's assume they don't. 20, uh, well, you've got uh, a 30 kilowatt cap in the state of Kentucky. I just drove to Indiana to put in a 400 kilowatt array yesterday. In Indiana, they have a 1,000 kilowatt cap. That means you can put it. So we have businesses, and we, I was listening to Colleen, uh, and and uh, what she said really resonated with me. And I'm thinking about Amy earlier with the slide that said uh, you have uh, this, uh, you know, the lion's share of carbon coming from the commercial area. Well, you know, we've got business people. I have a guy in Louisville who wants to install 500 kilowatts on 15 acres of rooftop, but he can't do it. 30 kilowatts. It's a pittance to what. He, you know, why bother? It's a nuisance to do that. So we have this cap. We have to get that cap removed or lift it to at least 2,000 kilowatts of power. Yeah, that's got to be done by the, the legislature. Even West Virginia has a megawatt <laughs> of capacity in net metering. Thank you, Bill. Uh, who's our spokesperson here? Oh, I guess I am. Okay. I'm outnumbered, you know, at this table. I'm the only guy at this table. The girl said, Gary, you got to do it. So I'm trying to. Well done. But um, I represent Clark County. I work for local city and county government myself. And uh, I was actually the first uh, <coughs> bluegrass pride coordinator when Ernie Fletcher was a congressman many years ago. But, but some of the things, and we have some Fayette County, you know, some students here too, and they were talking about a local business and local organization called the Food Chain, which I'm not really familiar with here in Fayette County. But at the end, it's you know a, a collaboration of local you know food industries or businesses that you know try to do good things for the environment. But as far as Clark County is concerned, you know we have um, several initiatives. We actually got a new park that we're developing in Clark County, and it's going to be one of a kind of park for this part of the country. It's going to be like an eco park. We haven't really designated it as an eco park, but it's going to be. It's not going to be your typical recreational, you know, kick the soccer ball type park. It's going to have a lot of educational focuses for some um, envir environmental conferences, environmental events and stuff. And I do environmental events every year during the Commonwealth Cleanup uh, Month week and, and Earth Day and Re American Recycle Days and stuff like that. But this is going to be one of the kind that's going to focus on, we're going to try to have a rainforest and we're going to focus on energy conservation, water conservation, recycling and other activities and stuff within this park. Uh, where the old Clark County Hospital used to be. We had the foundation that's sitting on an awful lot of money, and they recently uh, designated or uh, put $3.5 million into developing this park and getting it started. So it's going to be 
amazing. Uh, we have Lower Tires Creek Nature Conservancy over there too, and um, Lady Claire Sivlon, though some of you may know her, and I'm surprised she's not here. She's the uh, chair of the Kentucky River Authority, and we're involved with the Kentucky River Trail System. That you know, we were one of the first counties that you know kind of actively participated in that. And uh, we also have Strokes Creek Nature Conservancy, which is um, uh, involved with you know trying to uh, keep the pollution out of the low of the uh, uh, Strokes Creek Nature, the Strokes Creek uh, Water uh, 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 Area that goes into the Ohio. Clark County is kind of unique because half of our county, the water goes to the Kentucky River and goes to the Ohio River, and the other half goes up the Licking River, so we got a division there. Uh, we have, um, of course, we got just started single stream recycling with the whole municipality of Winchester within the last few weeks. We started about a year ago with a trial run with you know part of the, the area, and then we've expanded to the whole city of Winchester, and it's going very well. So Water and Conservation Office is very involved with um, you know, some of the ecological uh, activities that we're doing. The Clark County Extension Service, which is every county has its extension service, they're very <coughs> active with recycling programs and um, get things uh, going. And so what else we've got? And uh, we have, uh, okay, this is the next one. Some of the issues and we talked about earlier is litter. Every cigarette butt that's thrown on the ground eventually winds up in the water. And cigarette butts contain a lot of different chemicals and stuff that pollutes their water. And I coordinate the Kentucky River sweep every year, and believe me, we have a lot of trash that we pull out of the water that's roadside litter that eventually winds up. And I got to wrap it up here too. And um, last but not least is um, some other initiatives. Um, we're uh, trying to, you know, get some uh, more buy-in and collaboration with all the different city and county agencies. Even though our city hall and our county courthouse has implemented some energy conservation measures, it hasn't expanded out to all the different agencies. We've got to make sure that everybody does a little something rather than trying to get a few people to do a lot. It's, it's really important that we all do a little bit of something. And education is a key for making all this happen. And we rely on Bluegrass Green Source a lot for their educational efforts within our schools and stuff too. So hats off to them. Thank you very much. Who's the uh, spokesman? Hold on, let me get you. I get close enough so I can hear you and get it recorded. Okay. So some of the other green and sustainable initiatives that might have a vested interest are Growing the Future of Frankfurt, which is a joint initiative between Kentucky State University and the Qantas Club, Kids Grow Kentucky, Kentucky Riverfront Development Project, Parks Development and Planning Organizations, Equine Organizations, Walk Bike Frankfurt, and other outdoor organizations such as Ducks and Trout Unlimited, Reforced Frankfurt, the Beautification Committee, Town Trail Certification Initiative, the Kentucky Student Environmental Coalition, the Master Gardener Group, Kentucky Extension Offices, Division of, Contr Division of Conservation, so Conservation Districts, the Kentucky University Partnership for Environmental Education, Green Chalice, and the Kentucky Interfaith Power and Light. So, so for some of the issues that are facing the region and the Commonwealth today, the biggest issue that we saw was growth. So how are we going to keep up the sustainability initiatives as the region grows as a whole? Water quality, which is one of the biggest issues I was talk touched upon today. So how are we going to keep the water quality clean and maintain this for future generations? Transportation, how can we green up transportation, make our transportation system much more sustainable? So, and also economic development. So making it economically feasible to be sustainable. And also the lack of voice for youth, which is kind of a hard thing to do because youth have much less ways to connect with each other than adults do. But there is a large pool of untapped efficacy with the youth that can be put to very great use if they can connect with each other. And finally, for some programs and initiatives that we believe should be focused on to improve our local environment, our water quality, and also trail development and water supply. So all of these things need to be kept up with as the region grows, and that's what we thought was really important. And another thing that we thought was really important was the integration of trails and roads to allow for these parks and these bike trails to be put in place, and also the historic preservation of things that have been in Lexington for a long time. Thank you. Well done, and youth is the key. Who's our uh, spokesperson on the last table? I guess the advantage of being last is I gotta wrap it up fast. <laughs> um, some of the things we were talking about is uh, moving the discussion beyond just what benefits humans to what benefits plants and animals in our community. So getting um, wild ones in our community does planting, uh, encourages planting of native species and moving away from the Home Depot type species, which by the way are full of neonics, don't buy them. But you'll be killing the bees in your yard. And um, uh, so people get more involved with 
a national organization called Monarch Watch to plant native species that the uh, monarch butterflies depend on in their migration. Uh, maybe thought more, um, getting more Be Kentucky Beekeepers Association and our new state apiarist, Kent Tammy Horn involved, which also links us to Eastern Kentucky and her initiative to get more beehives and reclaim mining land. Uh, Bluebird Trail and so on, just getting some attention of running clover, danger of running clover, move attention away from just us humans, we're very self-centered, to uh, other animals and plants. Um, well, another thing we talked about was uh, looking around in this room, the lack of diversity uh, in our community that gets involved with um, in, in green uh, issues. And let's face it, if you're low income, your survival is number one, and it's hard to make the time to get involved with green issues, but we definitely need to, I think, have more outreach to low-income uh, people of color in our community to get them. They're the ones who can disproportionately benefit from things like energy-efficient housing, uh, perhaps groups like um, Habitat for Humanity and so on, to get us, uh, to get more involvement from that uh, sector of our community. Um, church involvement, someone else has mentioned. Um, and I'm going to put in a personal thing I just thought of after we had discussed. I work at Fayette County Water Watch, uh, Kentucky River Water Watch, and making more awareness of the uh, importance of clean water in our community. Kentucky has so many miles of rivers and streams compared to any other state. I think it's the largest. Yes. And yet we ignore them. Fayette County, I'm relatively new. I've been here 10, 12 years. I didn't even know we had a, uh, a Fayette County, um, the, the water system, are, um, so I, I think we need to have more attention to our watersheds of Fayette County and get more people involved in paying attention to our water quality and making our our streams not just something, I, you know, I do the water sampling and most of our streams are hidden behind, full of garbage sometimes, but they're always hidden behind mini stores, you know, convenience stores. They're not right there where I watch them. I live half a mile from a headwaters of uh, one of our watersheds, and I didn't even know about it. Oh, so. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to wrap up here in a, a couple minutes. Let me get up back up front. <laughs> so it'll look good on YouTube, won't it? Uh, I, when I first uh, kind of played this out in my head, first of all, we thought there would be two tables. Uh, luckily, we had over 60 people here uh, today participating, so thank you all for coming. Uh, and I, I did want to echo what the lady just uh, said about low income and, and uh, other uh, minorities. And uh, I know from the work we've been doing in West Liberty, Kentucky, and, and there are literally tens of thousands of Kentuckians that are having to decide to pay their electric bill or eat or go to the doctor or pay their electric bill. So we've got to do something. It's, it's incumbent upon us to do this. But when we started this uh, vision here, I thought when we did these table report outs that there'd be a lot of duplication. But what I heard here were many, many things that these activists that have been working around the table to set this up didn't even know about some of these uh, uh, programs and stuff. And we're certainly going to transcribe and get all the information down uh, about this. This is just the beginning, as I said before. It'll be after the first of the year, but we're going to consume all this. We'll get this uh, uh, summit up on YouTube. We'll share it with everybody. So two things, and then we're going to play one short video as we depart. But two things, uh, if you can have a perfect event, and I think it's very hard to be perfect, but we're very darn close to perfect on this, is I need everyone to sign that survey. If everybody signs and indicates what they're willing to do, then we will collectively have an, a huge impact on our state, on our region, and on the, the citizens uh, of, of the planet. And so with that, uh, Florence, you had uh, a video you wanted to... Music. music. We're going to end, end with uh, playing some music uh, that we had. So thank you everybody for coming. Please take a couple more minutes to fill out your survey.